Today we're heading out of Atlantic Beach. We're gonna be targeting trophy striped bass using wire rods with my good friend, Dr. Mike Verdi. Basically, we're gonna probably shoot into about 45 feet to start, drop down a few Tony Maja bunker spoons and see what happens. There's been some bass, it's been a slow pick, but last week I had one 36.55 pounds. Hopefully we'll beat it today. Let's see what happens. All right, guys, so we're just gonna talk about the rigs that we're using quick. From the stainless steel wire that's on the reel, we have another 20 feet of 80 pound mono, which comes directly to a snap swivel. There's two ways that you can, or a couple different ways that you can put the bunker spoons in the water. You can put the spoon directly to the swivel. You can put a, a four ounce drail on it, like we have on this rod, or a third setup that we have, it goes to a three-way snap swivel, an additional two feet of mono to a 20 ounce weight. This just gives it a little extra depth, gives you about 20 extra feet so you don't have to have as much line out. Coming off the other part of the three-way swivel is another 20 feet of mono going directly to our spoon. One of the things you want to watch when you're bunker spoon fishing is all the information is in the tip of the rod. How fast you should be trolling, how the spoon's working. You want to have a nice, steady pump. A lot of people you hear on the radio is somebody will catch a fish and the first thing they're going to get back, someone's going to go to VHF and say, hey buddy, how many feet of water? Good question. Um, next question I'm going to usually ask is, how fast are you going? It doesn't really matter. You know, every boat's going to be different. It depends on the wire, if you're using 50 pound, 40 pound, 30 pound, obviously 50 pounds is gonna get you down deeper than that of 40 pound. And also like right now we're going into the wave, so I have to keep adjusting the throttle. We've got some fish right there we're marking. I have to keep adjusting the throttle to keep me, you know, to those spoons, a nice, you know, bouncing, swishing motion type of uh, action is what you want. Too fast, they're gonna spin, no good, you'll catch a bluefish on them when they're spinning. See right now I'm going a little too fast, I can see the tip of the rod isn't going as good. So I bring it back and you get that nice steady pump. So the key to the pump is the actual shape of the spoon. If you take a look at it, it's called the spoon because it has a concave side and a convex side. So what we're gonna actually do is just show how the spoon swims in the water. It's gonna be swimming concave side up. And as it's being pulled behind the boat, it washes from one side to the other. That's what creates the pump in the rod and it creates a positive feedback loop where the spoon as it's coming up on its side, we'll pull on the rod, and that's how you see the rod tip going down. Once the tension is enough to break that sideways motion, it'll kick back the other way, and that's the rod coming back up again. Looking at the rod tip is absolutely key, and it tells you exactly what your spoon is doing at all times. Right now, if you look, we're just walking. There's a couple bass. That's probably about 20, 30 feet. A few swimming by. Our laws are actually below that. We're trying to get the big one. But we'll see what happens. I'm going to keep going until we get our 40 pounder today. What we're doing right now is controlling wire line with bunker spoons. We're trying to get strike backs. What we're trying to do is mimic a wounded bunker swimming towards the bottom of the ocean. So if you take a look, this is a bunker. This is the, exactly what we're trying to mimic. And it's right next to a Tony Ma, Maja bunker spoon. You can see that the size and the shape of the bunker is pretty much spot on with the spoon. The way the spoon is set up, it swims in a side to side swashing motion, which perfectly mimics a wounded bunker swimming down towards the bottom. And hopefully it's gonna catch us some strike bass right now. So what you wanna do is once you have one hooked up, you really don't wanna pump the rod. You wanna do a steady retrieve because these lures weigh so much, plus the extra weights that we have on them, you could easily create a huge hole in the fish's mouth and just lose your fish. So if you notice when Mike's reeling right now, he's doing a steady retrieve, not pumping at all, and just springing in the fish. The whole key with any kind of fishing is just keep the line tight. Definitely, any slack results in a lost fish, and it happens all the time. I'm gonna give him a little throttle to keep that line tight. <laughs> Oop. Yeah, There's your yeah, fish. Just let me know if you want to have a little bump forward. Sounds good. Another thing, if you notice, like we're not really 
doing too much tight drag because with this wide, there's zero stretch. So we give it a little play, you know, give it a decent amount of drag, but not too, too much drag. Looks like a big blue. You can put that right in the water. Oh, oh. gone. <laughs> that fish was snagged in the back and the shoulder. It looked like a blue. I couldn't tell. It was a little too deep, but that's what happens. You win some, you lose some. I'm tight. That sounds like a bigger fish. Yeah. Are right, you ready? This thing's going to push me up on the, uh, the current's going to push me. You see the follower? Beautiful. I don't know if you got that. There was a fish following that one. I'm not sure if you saw it. And the spoon of the day, always my favorite. Tony Maja, green and yellow. Well, green and chartreuse, actually, but green and yellow. Spoon's deadly. Absolutely deadly. One of the important things about fishing is taking care of your catch so you have nice fillets to bring home. And the biggest thing you can do to preserve the quality of the fish is to bleed them as soon as they come into the boat. What we like to do, just take a knife, and it's gonna come in right here behind the gills on the membrane. It's a little slice, so all you need. Put them in a cooler with ice and a little bit of water, and you're gonna have perfect fillets to take home. Watch that big boy, you don't clock yourself in the head. He's definitely the biggest of the day, it looks like. He's not over 40 though, right? 20 pounder though. That's a nice fish. Nice 20 pound bass. That's another beauty. On the white marge this time. And the whole key for having the stinger hook on there, we'd have never had him if we didn't have the second hook. Beautiful, nice 20 pound glass fish bass. right there. And back home. When you're wireline fishing, it is super tiring. It's taxing on the body, your arms, everything. A cheap little belt like this, Bass Pro Shops, probably 20 bucks, 30 bucks. It's gonna save the day, it helps out a lot. The rods are heavy, there's a lot of tension with the wire. It's really, it's definitely worth investing in a small belt like this. You're not gonna spend a lot, but it's gonna definitely save the day and save your forearms. Just check that drag, because you might have tightened it. Now, I don't know if you heard what he said. He said he's just getting Gorilla Blues. The reason why he's just getting Gorilla Blues, and this will actually be our little tip of the day, when you're fishing this deeper water, you need to get these baits down. Generally, you want to be within 10 feet of the bottom. So to ensure this, there's a defined sink rate with all the lines that we use. Right now, we're trolling stainless steel wire, and it sinks at a 10 to 1 ratio. Meaning for every 10 feet that you let out behind the boat, it'll sink one foot into the water column. Now, to get further in depth, what we do is we add drill weights. The drill weight, normally they come in four ounce increments. Every four ounces is going to get you down an additional five feet on top of whatever the stainless steel has you down. So right now we're trolling in 60 feet of water. We have 300 feet of line out on this rod right here and we have an additional eight ounces of drill weight on there. That's putting us down at around 40 feet right now. The other rod we have down with a 20 ounce weight with 300 yard feet of line out, and that's getting us down a little bit further. We're pretty much puffing bottom with that spoon right now. But staying in the right zone is the key. If you're not in the zone, you're not gonna catch fish. One of the things you wanna be very cautious of is that when you're letting out wire, you want to make sure one person's on the throttle, on the wheel, keeping this boat as straight as possible. If you're on any type of turn or anything, these lines will cross and you will destroy this wire. There's no turning back, there's no fixing it. Once that wire twirls around each other, it's done. You're going to have to buy a new wire at uh, 50 bucks. It's an expensive little mistake. So, 50 bucks per spool to fill that is. So, what we want to do is I'll stay on the wheel. Mike's letting out the line. We're going to keep it nice and straight. We have them in the outrodders and Everything's going to be good. But if I start turning, that line's going to go right into the other line. Come back, Mike, get in here. I said thanks again. I just hooked up again. Nice, nice. It seems like it's in the north direction. 
Your rod tells you everything. All the information is going to be in the tip of that rod right there. You watch that rod, and this is going to tell you the speed. Three to three and a half knots, that's a good foundation speed. Start it over there, and you watch. Right now, I got a nice slow pump, so that spoon right now is going like this. If it really starts pumping too fast, that spoon's going to be spinning, which is no good. So right now, I'm doing 3.3 knots. I got a nice pump, but I think I can go just a drop faster. Just to see if we can get it going a little bit better. Too slow, the rod's not going to work at all. Just fluttering dead spoon. You want to get that nice, steady. Basically, the spoon's like this in the water. And Tony, the way he designs these spoons, they flutter perfect, you know, with just that right speed, and all the action is right there. And also, you want these out rodders. Number one, it keeps the rods far apart. It also keeps that line closer to the water. You can get down a little deeper, and it just did great products. And also with these, I don't know if you guys showed, saw this yet, if you get a fish, you could pull this pin actually out. This pin will come out, and you can just lift it that way if you're having trouble taking the rod out of the rod holder. Another little trick with bunker spoon trolling is on your turns. Now, when you make a turn, this spoon is going to come hard. If I'm making a turn to the port, my, I'm sorry, making a turn to the starboard, my port spoon is going to rise, and my starboard spoon is going to drop. If you get a hit on that starboard spoon, you know that your line's got to go a little bit deeper because that just dropped and hooked a fish. But also what it does is when you're making a turn, you're actually changing the action of the spoon, which may cause the fish to bite. They could be following that spoon, following that spoon. Also, the spoon does something different. Whammo, they hit it, and it's fish on. Blue. Looper. That's what happens when you go higher. Blue fish. Let them go. Big blue, sir, for big blue. There it is. Fish on. That's how you end it. Sorry about that. I had a good Saturday. Spin you around so you can have it that way. Just want to get us off those rocks. Keep it though, I'll be our third fish. We can actually keep him. End the day on a bunker. A lot bigger than I thought he was. Nice job, nice way to yeah, end it. buddy. All right. Okay, hold the gas up. We're done. We're limited out. So on today's adventure, while we were wireline trolling for bass, we were using Tony Maja size four adult bunker spoons, and this mechanism, which I really don't know what it is, a parachute with a 20 ounce ball. I purchased that in Virginia Bass Pro Shops, and this was getting us down to the depths that we want because we were fishing in deeper water. Also, as I forgot to mention, make sure you use safety lines on your rods too when you uh, bunker spoon trolling or any wire line trolling for that. They could be pulled out of the out rodders, you get a wood fish and just hit it. So you definitely want to have everything taken care of, buckle down so you don't lose it. As you notice today, a lot of fish we hooked were caught on this treble sting hook that we like to add. I add these myself, Tony doesn't offer them on his bunker spoons. But being that we do a lot of tournament fishing, we like that extra security of getting that fish. But what Tony does offer, you could purchase these 8.0 stinger hooks, and all you would do is remove this uh, side wash hook, take that off, replace that, and now you have a second hook on your main hook for a little bit of extra security for hooking the fish. Well, I hope you all enjoyed today's show and possibly learned a few things. I'm Captain Joey Leggio. Dr. Mike Verdi was my guest today. And you're watching Chasing Tail TV.